In a time of tumult and transformation, a man stands at the forefront of change. His legacy paves the way for generations of activists and leaders. On February 25, 1870, Hiram Revels becomes the first African-American in Congress. Revels is born free in North Carolina in 1827. His ancestors had been free since before the American Revolution. An ordained minister, he preaches across the Midwest. During the Civil War, Revels helps organize and recruit two black Union regiments in Maryland and Missouri. He serves as an army chaplain and participates in the pivotal Battle of Vicksburg in Mississippi. Revels remains in Mississippi after the war and becomes involved in Reconstruction era politics. The 1867 Reconstruction Acts divide the South into five military districts and grant suffrage to all male citizens. By 1870, all former Confederate states have been readmitted to the Union and most are controlled by Republicans, thanks in large part to black voters. In early 1870, the Mississippi legislature elects Revels to fill a U.S. Senate seat once held by Jefferson Davis. Revels is sworn in on February 25th, becoming the first of 16 black men to serve in Congress during Reconstruction. Stay tuned for more on Hiram Revels and African Americans in Congress. Don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. You'll also find Today in Black History for Black History Month. There's a link in the description. All right, let's get more on Revels. He traveled extensively in the U.S. and lived in many different places, from Maryland to Kansas to Louisiana. His second cousin was named Lewis Sheridan Leary, and he was actually part of John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry in 1859 and was killed there. Uh, this event, this raid on Harper's Ferry, of course, is a major catalyst for the Civil War. Let's talk more about Revels and the U.S. Senate. So remember that state legislatures until 1913 with the 17th Amendment, they are the ones that choose United States senators. So he is elected in January by the uh, state legislature of Mississippi to fill one of two vacant seats in the U.S. Senate. Now, these seats had been left vacant when Mississippi seceded from the Union. So uh, he's just filling one part, or just the, the last portion of that term in the U.S. Senate. When he arrives, Southern Democrats, not surprisingly, oppose seating him. And there are two days of debate on the issue. Uh, their argument centers around the 1857 Dred Scott Supreme Court decision. In this decision, uh, it is declared by the Supreme Court that black Americans are not citizens. And so when the 14th Amendment comes along in 1868 and declares that blacks are citizens, what these Democrats in the Senate are arguing is that this means that Revels has only been a citizen for two years, only since 1868, because Dred Scott declared before then, essentially, that's their argument, that blacks are not citizens. And, and there's a nine-year citizenship requirement in order to be a member of the U.S. Senate. That's in the Constitution. So that's their basic argument. Uh, the counter arguments from Republicans in the U.S. Senate are that, first of all, he met the pre-requirement or the, the requirement of the pre-Dred Scott ruling in effect because he had voted in Ohio before the Civil War even began and thus he's a citizen. Um, they also make an argument which to me is kind of sad, uh, not kind of sad, quite sad. The other argument they make is that he is of partial European ancestry and therefore the Dred Scott decision doesn't even apply to him. Um, but the biggest and the most effective of all of the arguments they make is that the Civil War overturns the Dred Scott decision. And so none of that matters. In fact, the Civil War essentially determines that this declaration in the Dred Scott decision that, that blacks aren't citizens just doesn't count anyway, and that the war has decided this. In fact, there's one U.S. Senator that, that mocks these uh, Southern Democrats that are opposing rebels being seated in the Senate, and he mocks them by saying, you know what? they're just still trying to fight the last battle of the Civil War, and they need to get over it. The vote is a party line vote, not surprisingly. It's 48 to 8 straight along party lines. And on, of course, February 25th, Revels is sworn in and seated in the Senate. 
One other interesting fact about Revels is that he is also partially of Native American ancestry. And so technically he is the first of avowed Native American ancestry to serve in the US Senate as well. Now, he's in the Senate for just barely over a year, only until March 1871, because that's when this term of office for this Senate seat expires. And he is, uh, doesn't, is, isn't placed for the, for the next period. And uh, I, I couldn't find any exact information on, on why that is. I mean, maybe I needed to do better research, but I'm not sure exactly why he didn't uh, do another term, whether it was his decision or the decision of the legislature, that I don't know. But while he's in the Senate, he fights for a number of things, and not surprisingly, one of those is equality. And he does this with mixed results, we'll say. He argues for school integration. Clearly, that doesn't work out. He uh, nominates a young black man to uh, attend West Point, but this man is denied admission when he shows up there. So not so successful on those fronts. He does have some success, though. Uh, one situation in particular, you have black workers who uh, had been barred from the Washington Navy Yard because of the color of their skin, and he's able to successfully get these individuals working at the Washington Navy Yard. So some success on uh, his quest for equality. After his time in the Senate, he becomes the first uh, president of Alcorn State Agricultural and Mechanical College, which is a historically black college. And this is in Mississippi. It's now known as Alcorn State University. He also serves for a time as the Mississippi Secretary of State. He dies in Aberdeen, Mississippi in 1901 at age 73. Now, more than 600 black men served in state legislatures and more than a thousand more in local offices during reconstruction. So this was a time where opportunities are starting to happen for African-Americans, especially obviously African-American men. In total during reconstruction, you have 14 who serve in the House of Representatives and two blacks that serve as senators, Revels and then after him, a man by the name of Blanche Bruce. And he actually serves a full term of six years in the US Senate. He's also from Mississippi. Interestingly, Bruce is formerly enslaved as well. And he becomes the first, and this is in 1879, the very first to preside over a full Senate meeting. Uh, so Blanche Bruce in those six years has more opportunities than Revels who kind of paves the way there in the Senate. Now, this, success, this growing success for African Americans in government is very short lived, or is it short lived? This was a debate I was having even with myself this morning and I looked it up and it didn't really answer things. So, you know, it would be a really stimulating debate. Let's debate whether it's short lived or short lived, you know, in the comments. I mean, wow, that would be scintillating to say the least. All right, so anyway, this is all short-lived or lived because Reconstruction ends in 1877. And at that point, Jim Crow begins taking over. And so the last member of the house, black member of the house who was elected during Reconstruction leaves office in 1879. You do have a handful of post-Reconstruction era uh, blacks who serve in Congress, but they're few and far between. The, in fact, the last Confederate state that elects a black man to Congress, that's in 1898, and that doesn't happen again until 1972. In uh, 1967, almost 100 years after Hiram Revels and Blanche Bruce, Edward Brooke is elected to the Senate, and he's the first black man elected to the Senate uh, since those two, and also the first ever elected by popular vote, now that the 17th Amendment is in place. And there are only two, however, currently, only two black senators in the United States Senate, and there have only been 12 in the entire history of the U.S. Senate. I guess, interestingly, though, two of them have risen to even greater heights within U.S. government. Of course, Barack Obama, a U.S. senator, became president of the United States, and Kamala Harris, a U.S. senator, became vice president of the United States. Now, so just in the, in the U.S. House, I guess we could say there's a little more success for African Americans today. 59 members of the House of Representatives, that's out of 435, 
are black. And interestingly, I did the math on this because I was kind of curious. Okay, how does that match up with the population of the United States? And 59 out of 435 is 13.6%. And 13.6% of the United States is black. So the House of Representatives matches up very well. The Senate, not so much, just 2% of the Senate being black. That's not anywhere near the 13.6% of our population. All right, well, if you've liked what you've seen here today, please like and subscribe. And you can find another great Mr. Lewis video here. And there's another one right over here. Thanks again.